Hey guys! So, that other video idea that I said I was gonna do, we're finally doing it now. This is the first time that y'all have been harsher than I have. That doesn't happen that much. I'm actually kind of used to being the other side of the spectrum where I'm the harsher one and people are kind of pointing out me for being too harsh. I'm not gonna go and list every single name because it's gonna take me forever and I'm gonna pronounce them horribly, so I'm just gonna kind of go through every single comment here and talk about which ones I think are just right funny. This entire episode was hot garbage. The music was terrible, the slapstick was terrible, and it was terribly written. Although the fight club idea was clever, that's the only good thing about this episode. Points for the big lipped alligator moment with the tap dancing, though lol that was just bizarre. Although apparently neither DJ nor dancing need or Jensen needed double, so I guess thumbs up. I still am kind of off guard about that whole part. It, why was it in it? This episode epitomizes how far the show has fallen. This episode has been done before and done well. Funny episodes on this show once pushed boundaries of the genre, but this was cheap, nasty, and simplistic cartoon humor. I just, I can't believe this is our show now. Damn, that's straight savage. That is, whew, I haven't been that savage in a while. I've kind of just given up, but this episode felt like a Looney Tunes cartoon with cringe-worth humor. <laughs> Wait a damn second, doesn't this episode prove literally everything they did was hipster Jesus' plan and thus there is no free will for them? I don't remember comedy episodes destroying the theme of the season like this. Most impressive. Definitely impressive. Just not the right kind of impressive, I guess. Oh wait, hang on, I gotta press the button. This is a mug that my dad got me that's a lens. Unfortunately, it's a Nikon lens, but whatever. I like to toss it around and make Nikon people feel... So is anyone going to mention how Garth knows Cass well enough to name one of his freaking kids after him? Did I miss an episode? When did Garth meet or even hunt with Cass? Were they acquainted enough for Garth to do that? Or does Dad think that the audience has memories of a goldfish or the attention span of a five-year-old? I'll be honest, I forgot. Mind you, I've never cared about the Garth character that much and the Garth character has been so intermittently used in this entire show that Whenever he comes back, I'm like, oh yeah, it's the guy from Road Trip. The dude who ate the sweaty pancakes. I can't help thinking this episode title was a reference to the Winchesters, but to Garth, and how much he has matured since Bobby sent him to help Dean when Becky was after Sam. Garth also is living both boys' dreams of a good home life while staying only periodically engaging in punting. Like I said, they did Garth good. I turned it off during the scene where Garth, a werewolf, revealed that he had a thriving dentist practice. I didn't find it funny. Admittedly, that was a little odd that he has it in his basement, like a murderer. Don't worry, Jeremy, only 10 episodes left. The pain is almost over. Cheers to that, sir. If God being gone makes them normal, wouldn't it be the same if they trapped him with the mark? You know what, I'm just, I'm just not gonna try and think about Dab's plot holes. I hope they don't confirm the God armor angle. Otherwise, this means every hunt that they have done have been about God helping them, making them the most amateur hunters ever. I agree, I honestly agree. Like I said, there was parts of this episode that I didn't mind, like the idea that the car has been invincible this whole time, the fact that they couldn't do anything good and then they started fighting people like a cartoon, like when Dean was like, oh, into that dude, or what, what, I don't know what the hell that was, but it wasn't good. All good things must come to an end. I wish it was good. Whoa! It's so weird in many scenes, the way Dean talks is just so cartoony. Is it possible that instead of them being written to be normal, they have been written by Chuck as a big joke instead? Seriously, even in that last fight scene, they act so cartoony instead of being realistic and try to fight for their lives. That's a possibility. Instead of them being normal, they're just in a cartoon world, but they would have pushed that more, not this normal thing, so I'm not going to give them that much credit. This episode felt cringy. I wish your videos were longer. Oh, that's nice of you to say. Mind you, I've actually been trying to get them shorter because I feel that people would watch them more and this will be a long one. What about heaven that still needs sorting out, Andrew Dab? Yeah, you know that plot line that he totally dropped? He might bring it back. Immediately he has 10 episodes to shove as much garbage into this as he thinks he can, so... Don't hold your breath. I thought it was so bad. The ideas weren't bad though, but just the tone ended up all over the place. Especially after the last episode being such a serious episode and 90% of the jokes were cringy as fuck. <laughs> this is probably one of the dumbest episodes this show has ever had. And you guys are really making it clear to me now. I like this episode. Yeah, the story is crap and the music didn't fit, but it's not that bad. 
It kept me entertained through most of the episode, and yeah, that's a big deal for me. The ending was super predictable. That is when it got boring for me. And you know what? Each to their own. You know, you're allowed to have and enjoy it. Man, though, if, if you think that's... Rewatch older seasons. You'll be pleasantly surprised at what good content is. My problem about Supernatural now is that episodes 1 to 9 had a focus on how to kill Chuck. Now episode 10, yes, is funny, but I'm disappointed that the story doesn't continue anymore. Last episode ended with Dean coming to Jack saying it's time... Or, sorry, death coming to Jack. And now it is being used as a side story again, like season 14. Then it will be later brought up again. If a show or a story continues, it's supposed to carry be carrying that story until its final moment. That's Andrew Dabb in a nutshell. He just constantly does not keep everything on in perspective. He just was like, he's all over the goddamn place. He never actually keeps consistent with a theme or a narrative. He just curious, you hadn't mentioned it in your video, but what was your take on the whole tap number? It caught me off guard, and while, yeah, it's another supernatural thing, can, uh, supernatural can say it's done, and it fits the cheesy humor of the episode, I felt it was really misplaced, as my parents, who saw this with zero context and don't really watch the show, told me Supernatural has really jumped the shark. Honestly, I don't really know the point of that entire gag. It just, ugh, I don't know. It was very, very misplaced. I think I even say in the comments. I think this episode wasn't the worst thing ever, just poorly placed in the series. It took me a minute to figure out what was going on and why Sam couldn't cook. That was a little dumb and confusing because cooking mainly takes knowledge. Now that the grilled cheese, the locks, the fighting, I could understand why they couldn't do those things, but the first half left me completely confused. My husband loved the slapstick. I personally find the slapstick to be the lowest form of humor, but I joined seeing him laugh. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I had mixed opinions too. That being said, the story is now just, I don't know for me. Plus we got teased Jack and no, not here again. So yeah, my fears for this season are happening. The fact that they ended the last episode with that tease and then they just completely dropped it was just, just stupendous. Thank you guys for giving me your comments. A lot of these are really funny. And like I said, you guys are, you guys are evil, some of you. But like, you're you're you have proper justification for your anger. Like you make up good points, and I can't believe that I didn't bring up some of these. Like it's funny to see you guys become more aggressive about the show than I am. I guess that's just kind of me now. Like I'm in the last nine episodes now. I'm just so done with this. I I don't have hope that this won't end well now. I don't have any hope for that. I'm just hoping now for okay but even that's a stretch. Thank you guys again for doing this. I really appreciated this. Can't wait for the next episode review and to see all your guys' comments because once again, I will go through and read the ones that I really like and uh, we'll just uh, tear this show apart together. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.